So a week ago, I dropped a video talking about a vehicle research study here in Southern California that I suspected was for the next Land Cruiser. So I did go to that and everybody commented and gave a lot of great feedback on what the next Land Cruiser should be. So this is my follow-up video. And as you can see in the title, I mean, I have insane, amazing news that we should all know pretty crazy now at this study i went to i signed an nda so i cannot discuss what i saw what could be on the horizon and again it was just you know suggestions getting people's feedback you know interiors doors getting in getting out what do you think uh, what vehicle was it they never admitted what it was for i only suspect and think that it was put on for Toyota executives because they got to figure out the US market. So in my video last week, so many comments came in. So thanks for you guys participation. That was awesome. And one of the biggest things that people kept saying was they want it to look like this. They're like the 80 series, right? Because let's think about it. The 60 series has leaf springs, the 40 series leaf sprung also. And let's face it, they are not coming back with leaf sprung trucks, but solid axles with coils and shocks, ooh, don't get me started. How amazing would that be, right? So let's look at some of those comments um, that were on that video just to share with you guys. All right, look to the right, some of these comments from that video. As an owner of a 6080, would love to see something similar to the 80. This is a common theme here. People saying solid axles, you know, make it like a 100. Make it like a 70, but it was mostly keep it reasonably priced under a hundred. Um, most people were commenting 80s though. Make it like the 80 series. Solid axles like an 80. Let's see, there's there's too many comments here to go through every single one. Make it like an updated 80 or 105 without the electronic fanfare. I really want a 60 or an 80. Any suggestions? Yeah, go buy one. I'd love an 80 series. Yep, me too. Got three of them. 80s size, diesel engine, live axles. I'll be in line tomorrow if they make it. They did make it. It exists. It's out there. No line needed. No brainer, 80 with an upgraded turbo diesel engine, three versions. I got a turbo diesel in one of my 80s. This person says, I say bring back the 80 series with solid axles, front and rear lockers, manual transmission, 4.5 gas or turbo. Yup, they made them. Lots of them. Tell them to remake the 80 series. This guy got it right. 80 was the last true Land Cruiser in the USA period. 80 is like a Porsche 911. It's timeless. Make the next Land Cruiser. Just make... Just remake the 80. Yep. And I can go on and on, but this one person says, bring back the title Land Cruiser 80. They just didn't want to build one from scratch. They just want one brand new. But you get the idea. Everybody wants a Land Cruiser 80 series. So overwhelmingly, the consensus was bring back the 80. A little bit of people said the 100, a lot said the 70, and I agree, the 70, they actually still make it, like bring it to the US. But the 80, even, wouldn't it be nice if they had an E80 diesel? Well, you're looking at one right now. So for 2024, even for early people in 2023, you can get an 80 series. How amazing is that? Is Toyota bringing back the 80 series? No. They've been there, done that. They made it already. <laughs> Look at that solid axle. In fact, they made 500,000 of these. 100,000 in the US, and that's combining the, the last two years, 96, 97 LX 450s. So can you get an 80 series with solid axles, with lockers, with not a ton of, of technology, you know, electronics dumbed down, made simple? Yes, you can just like I have. I got three right here. So set yourself a goal. In 2024, you can get a new Land Cruiser to you. It'll be new to you. It'll be used. It'll be, you know, 28, 30 years old. 
but you can get a Land Cruiser. Just stay away from the 91, 92s and get 93 and up because of that engine, the FZ, the one FZ dash FE engine. So you guys get it. Everybody says they want this, they want this, they want this. And like, keep it, at, keep it at 65, 70. Guess what? You can go get one for anywhere from 10 to 40, you know, maybe the, the average price being about 25. So the nicer they are, you're going to pay a little bit more, but you're going to pay less than 65. Actually, on my Land Cruiser podcast, I had a guy, Jay Perkins. He's got three Land Cruisers also. He pays a little bit more money than I do, though. He bought an LX450 with 24,000 miles on it for 100 grand. Why? Because there's not very many with 24,000 miles. And, I mean, fast forward... 55 grand, 54 grand back or 60 grand for an LX450. Back in 1996, 1997, how much is that today with inflated dollars? It's about 110 grand. So paying 100 grand for that vehicle, you know, a lot of people thought that was crazy. I think, well, that's normal. I had low miles. Now you don't have to spend that much. You know, I just picked up this Midnight Blue, not the one we're looking at. This is a Moonglow Pearl. But I picked up this Midnight shadow a week ago and i've done so much to it simple things like i got rid of the gold i did a nice kind of like uh charcoal added a roof rack guess what back in the mid 90s they didn't have all these companies making all this great equipment roof rack got um, the case up top did some retro little stickers on the side which that's just vinyl you can peel that off some people ask me like where'd you get that I made it. <laughs> Just go to go to eBay or Amazon and buy some 3M uh, 2080p vinyl, the, the colors you want, and cut it down to um, five inch, four inch, three inch, and then a three inch sticker fits right in the middle, and it's directly above the wheel hub. That's how you do that. Go make it yourself. It's pretty easy. So you can get yourself an 80 series. Let's face it, they are not gonna build another 80 series. And the reason being is, been there, done that. Laws have changed, right? From the mid 90s, as far as bumper heights. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that you have to be compliant in order to sell a vehicle in the US. So they will not bring this vehicle back. Solid axles front and back ain't gonna happen. Inline six or a V8, Look, all manufacturers are going to four bangers and you know twin turbo on the on the six cylinders. Technology's come a long way, and I know we are all holding on steadfast to the past, but the only way to really get one of these is to go get one of these. Just go buy it. What are you waiting for? And it's not like buying a brand new car off the showroom floor where it's gonna drop its value in no time. This will hold its value and if anything, go up in value. And, you know, if you want diesel, guess what? 25 import rule. It means we can import every single Land Cruiser right up into 1997 that was built anywhere else in the world. Or sorry, built in Japan, but sold anywhere else in the world. And you can bring it to here, to the U.S. and enjoy it like I have. This is a 1996 it's the 24 valve diesel, and it's said to be one of the best diesels. It is phenomenal. This truck drives different than this truck. This is why I have two of them. And the reason why I have three, that one will be for sale, but I just couldn't resist for a midnight. Just such an awesome cruiser. So, I mean, comment below, but why would, why are you guys, or some of you, not all of you, resistant to getting an 80? Everything you describe that you want Toyota to make is this. And let's face it, it's not the manufacturer's problem. It's, it's regulators. They're changing the game rule, the, the rules of the game, where there's not going to be an 80 series like we had. That's why this is from yesteryear. They don't build them like this anymore. In the mid 90s, Japan's economy was robust. It was going amazing and they just built the best truck. The technology was all in in 
the mechanics of the vehicle, not technology like Bluetooth and all that crap. You, know, you can add a double DIN to any of these. You can modernize any of these. And these drive great in today's traffic. They roll 80 miles an hour. Yeah, they drink fuel a bit, but that's not uh, anybody who's buying this. You're not looking for a, a sipper. You know, you're looking for something that you can overland in. These are phenomenal. Obviously, you know, you're preaching to the choir. I have three of them and I absolutely adore them. And, you know, I drive modern cars that uh, Range Rover over there. Yeah, it's great. It's got all this technology and actually it's pretty off-road capable. But the looks to me, it's all about the 80 series. This was like right between you know the 100 the 200 that you lost the solid axles um after the 60 series this has got creature comforts the suspension's phenomenal you can get a old man emu you can get a, a icon stage three you can get dobinsons adjustables there's so many options there's so many um suppliers that supply amazing things for these trucks so like this one for instance check it out Icon Stage 3, you can put all these goodies on it and still be way below what a brand new vehicle would be. And this is going to outlast any brand new vehicle you get in 2023. See, King Shocks on this with dual rate coils. It's just plush. The ride is phenomenal. But on Otis, this one, you can adjust that suspension. And, you know, the good old old man emu that's on so many... You can adjust it, but you don't really need to. Those suspensions, they're dialed in. I just did a video. So when I got this, I had the wood dash. Yeah, I made it very 90s. It's one of the reasons why we want new vehicles built, right? Well, check it out. Super clean seats. This all had wood. Look at that. Does that not look new? Come on, guys. Look at that seat. Does that not look new? Well, it is. It's a, it's a new seat and <laughs> I got built. But look, all of this looks amazing, right? I love it. Tactile, you got buttons, you've got your double din, so that modernizes it. Everything's super clean. Super clean. Now, someone did post saying, oh, I had the LX and the wood. If you take it off, there's holes that the, the wood goes into. So if that's the case, look what I did with Otis. Otis didn't have any wood, so that was cool, right? Everything was already super clean, right? Super clean. But here, because it wasn't protected by a fake wood dash um, trim coat, this was all scratched up and looked bad. So I got kind of an updated piano or bird's eye black um, cover, dash cover. And I didn't have to put, I just, just had to put it there. And then it came, the kit came with the side pieces here. So I put these on because, again, it's not cracked. It's, it's a more modern, you know, back in the 90s, this had like, like a, I don't know, like a veneer coating. And that's what would peel up and look crap. And the kit came with this. I think it was like 150 bucks. So if you do have a Lexus, you don't want to fill in those holes, but the wood's looking bad, peel it up and get a new modern dash kit. But if you have a Land Cruiser, those pieces... They're just stuck on there. So take them off, make it look great. But there you have it. Here are my 2024, to me, Land Cruisers. They're timeless. They're amazing. They're not going to be made anymore. The prices will just keep increasing when more and more people realize that. And Toyota's not going to come out with a vehicle that looks like this, guys. I'm sorry to break it to you. Maybe, maybe I'll be surprised. But you can import a 70 series like I did that one way in the back Godzilla that thing's amazing you can import them guys they they made tons of those too they still make them today they're worldwide with the one HZ that same engine that I have in that from 1992 they still make it let's get a closer look you know take a moment subscribe to the channel if you like Land Cruisers and you want to get tips and ideas like you know that dash cover those stickers um, I work with a lot of manufacturers too to get cool gear i'm going to be doing a video on this one for some handles i put here i don't want to kind of give it away yet but it is really cool different roof racks like that's a prince and this one down here that's a uh 
kind of like a front runner, but it's the original guys from South Africa. It's uh, big country or rugged bound here in the US. This is amazing. It's when it delivers to you, it's on a pallet, all one solid piece, but it's a great roof rack. It's less expensive than the front runner. It's more expensive than the Prinsu, but it's, if you're putting a rooftop tent, it's the one that's trusted. It's the most durable, the toughest. You can stand three 200 pound guys on that and it just looks so clean. So hit me up if you're interested in that. I'll put you in touch with the owner uh, distributor here in the US. But like I said, you can outfit your Land Cruiser the way you want. And I'll tell you, everybody who has an 80 can attest to this. You drive this around, it's a head turner. People like it. They liked it back then and they still like it today. And these were pricey back in the day. You know, 55 grand again is 110 in today's standards. So can they build one of these and keep it at 65? Hell no, ain't gonna happen guys. But you can buy one now. You really can. And the engines, they're built to be rebuilt three times and you get about half a million miles out of each rebuild. So 1.5 million or sorry, original engine and then rebuilt three times, 2 million miles. You're never going to have, you won't even have a, a, the lifetime to do that. So amazing trucks. Just make sure when you're shopping, stay out of the salt belt. These didn't take kindly to salt. And if you are in the salt belt, Drive it in the summer, spring, summer, and fall. Don't drive it in the winter time. These things are too precious. Well, they're rugged, but you know what I mean. They're too legendary to drive in the winter time in the salt. Don't do it. Just go drive your leased car that you're going to turn back in and not give two craps about. All right, there it is. Let's see what Toyota comes out with next, but I'll tell you this. It's not going to be an 80 series just common sense. I didn't even have to go to any study to even think of that. They're not gonna make this anymore. Been there, done that. Go get yourself a piece of history, buy a used one. And then whatever they come out with, you know, it will never compete with rock crawling with this. It'll be a great daily. It'll be the one to drive. You know, like for me, the reason why I don't get bored of any cars, it's variety, you know? So if you can, you know, afford more than one car, just don't buy brand new, buy used, work on it, you know, put your own sweat, tears into the vehicle and enjoy it. You're gonna enjoy it so much more. But if you have, you know, two, three vehicles or your 80 series is your weekender, you're always gonna love it because you're not driving it every day. Any vehicle you drive every day, I don't care what it is, <laughs> Ferrari, you're gonna get bored of it. Rolls Royce, you're gonna get bored of it. So variety is the spice of life. That's why you can see I got many Land Cruisers. I, I can't get bored of any of these. All right, well, subscribe, like. If you wanna see the one that's under wraps there, that's an FJ40 on 40 inch tires. It's a monster. That's Godzilla, that's Black Mamba, that's Otis. This is Big Blue down there. That's Menace, the HJ61 that my daughter drives. Uh, there's a couple in the garages. So if you, uh, you like Land Cruisers, subscribe. That's what my channel's all about. Give you great tips, ideas, even save money on some accessories for some of the uh, different manufacturers I work with. All right, so don't just think about it, dream about it. Hope that, uh, hoping and praying that Toyota's gonna be coming out with one of these. They did, it's out there, 100,000 of them. You know, let's say 10,000 of them are off the road in the US because of accidents or people just let it go or rust it out. There's still a ton of these out there. I know because I just sold one and then I bought this one a week later. You just gotta do your shopping. You know, for every four or five that you see, there's probably one that's gonna be cherry that you're gonna want. And some people don't know the value of these. Maybe you, you scoop up a deal, you never know. All right, thanks for tuning in. Hit the like, please, that'd be great. Keeps me motivated to keep putting out videos because it helps the, the algorithm and puts the videos up higher in, in YouTube or suggested videos. And subscribe, because uh, there'll be cool things coming. I got lots of videos lined up to share. 
So gonna be a summer long of cool Land Cruiser stuff, especially if you're in the market and you shoot me questions. If you have questions like, hey, do you think this is a good one? Or um, you can DM me here. You can hit me up on Instagram. I'm Land Cruiser 949 on Instagram, which is a little bit of an easier um, platform to chat back and forth. And I got a podcast, so you can join the podcast as well. All right. Enjoy your weekends. Thanks for tuning in and can't wait. You get a Land Cruiser, let me know. Send me a picture. I'll put it on my Instagram. That'd be pretty dope. All right. Happy trails. Later.